Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So, I'm investigating another project. It's a uh, mini stock build for the local uh, short track, oval track. And the rules um, kind of dictate what you got to run. So my plan is to run a KA24E, three valves, but I have to run a two barrel Holley carburetor, 500 CFM. So I need to uh, rig up a distributor, a points or electronic ignition distributor with at least a uh, centrifugal advance and uh, vacuum advance would be a bonus, but probably not necessary for oval track racing. So my plan is I have a, um, a Z22 out of a 720 truck. And, you know, I've done a bunch of searching online, and I know they talk about using the um, L-series distributor and its little pedestal base and redrilling the holes. Um, and then I guess you could run it with points and or switch it over to Petronics. But I got this uh, Z22 four-cylinder engine. And uh, as you know, it's a uh, eight-wire cap system. Four plugs for the intake and four plugs for the exhaust. And uh, anyway, so I had it, I took it all apart, started comparing parts, got the two, uh, I don't know what to call them, jack shafts for the oil pump drive and distributor drive. And uh, they appear to be the same length and same sizes of uh, shafts. And of course, I gotta have a different end for the different distributor which the uh, Z22 has. And the gears seem to be the same. They seem to fit the stock crank uh, drive gear. Here's a uh, KA23 distributor. As you know, it's electronic, no advance in it. That's all done by the computer. Here is the base from the uh, Z22. And here is the pedestal from the Z22. And with the pedestal on, the Z22 distributor, if you line up the, um, the surfaces, the mounting surfaces, and when the Z20, I've got it disassembled right now, obviously, but when the Z22 distributor was all together, the shaft lengths and everything were the same. The main difference was that two, two things. The uh, base of the Z22 distributor is longer than that of the uh, KA base, as you can see here in this picture where I'm pointing. And the um, pedestal, I guess they call it, which goes on the Z22 distributor, fits the hole in the um, front cover of a KA23. However, it was too long. It had this big snout on it. You can see right here. I'll take this off. So it had this big snout on here, which of course wouldn't go down inside all the way. So I just cut it off, sanded it a little bit. Now it slides right in nicely. Next issue was that the, um, the snout on the bottom of the distributor of the Z22 is this diameter here, you can see the shoulder here, all the way down. And so it would it would only go in like an inch or so and then get stuck. So I did a little uh, backyard engineering at its finest. And what I did was I shaved 
the snout down diameter wise enough so that it will fit in here. As you can see. And the way I did that was I took it all apart, which of course it is now, and I took the appropriate sized hole saw, an inch and an eighth, and I just went down the outside to the depth I needed to clear the inside diameter in the cover. Now it left a pretty rough finish. You can kind of see some of the streaks there, I think. And uh, so I just kind of took the sandpaper and cleaned it all up. So anyway, there's an O-ring that goes on here, sits inside the uh, Z22 pedestal, slides up on there. So besides these modifications, also I'm going to have to re-drill the pedestal holes because they don't line up anymore. The Z22 pattern is different than the Z, the KA24E pattern. And what I figured is, is that this little hole here on the Z22 pedestal doesn't quite line up with this. It's up above this hole a little ways. So I got two options. I can stick this pedestal in the, in the KA24 E housing. Line this little hole up so it's in line with this hole from the center line of the distributor. And then basically just egg this out with a file or a small Dremel. Make it oblong so that a bolt can go through here and all the way through that. And then I'll just put like a large heavy washer on the bottom and just sandwich the whole thing together. Then once I get that done, I'll mark this upper hole right here on the plate and drill and tap its own hole here. There's not a lot of thickness. Well, it's kind of hard to tell for sure from the back side what kind of thickness I have under this location here. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful. If I do happen to go through, um, I'm above the water passage, so that won't be an issue. It would just be exposed to windage, oil windage. So I think that if I do go through by accident, I'll just uh, goop a bunch of silicone on the bolt when I put it through here. The other uh, option I have is, is instead of egging this out, I can move this slightly over this way. See this hole here? And try to center it right in this little narrow chunk of metal and drill and tap its own little hole there. I could probably do it, but it'd be pretty weak, I think. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, slotting and egging and putting a big heavy washer on the back and just through bolt everything. Okay, so since I've already taken this apart, you don't really know how I've done it, but you can watch me put it back together. So I'm just going to put this in the vise, and I've cleaned everything up. It's a little metal washer on this Z22 distributor, make sure you got it on there. And I'm just going to slide everything down in. I've got a brass hammer here. There's a little indexing, um, kind of like a center punch right in here, stocked from the factory, so you can know where it goes. And just a couple screws to hold it in place.
Okay, so the next thing Make sure you spin it and everything's free is I've got the little drive guide I've got a drive guide I've got to put on here. And I'm just lining up the pinhole. Got a roll pin here that goes in there. Now you notice I'm not resting this plastic down on something hard and banging on it because I don't want to crack it. I'm just holding it by hand. And the uh, the pin seems to be going in quite nicely. Okay, there we have it. Got the pin put back in. Okay, now we got the ca vacuum advance canister. Gonna slide right in the hole. And there's a little tiny screw that goes through this plate and into the arm of that vacuum canister. And then there's a screw goes right in the side of the canister here to hold it from moving in and out. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to leave the O-ring off for now. Put our pedestal on. Slide the whole nine yards in here. This isn't the cover that I'm going to be using. This is just a spare cover. But let's take a look at a few things. So here's our new uh, drive shaft out of the Z22. It had this little plastic washer on top, which is like kind of disintegrating. Oh, actually, that was on the bottom. So the oil pump was between this gear and the oil pump. Okay, so we're going to test fit this drive gear in here. And you can see right here is the plastic. I'm going to spin it. The plastic guide for the distributor. Okay, and we're engaged. Let's see how much engagement I've got. Looks like it goes in about a quarter inch, maybe a hair less. That should be fine though, methinks. Now that we've got all that on there, let's slide a KA pump in the bottom. Okay, I've got a KA oil pump here. Okay, seems to engage properly. There's a little tiny bit of gap here, which is probably what this little washer took up. Yeah. That looks all pretty good. I think this is gonna work fine. All right, so my plan here on this uh, Z22 distributor is it's only got three wires going into it, into this module, which says 12 volts. And it has a blue wire 
which goes to a prong with an E, which I assume means exhaust. Then the red wire goes to a prong with an I, which I assume means intake. So my plan is to not use the exhaust side, just use the intake. And this other uh, wire in the middle has a B. So I'm assuming that means battery. One of my questions to you guys is, since this says 12 volts, does that mean I run 12 volts directly to this? Or is this coming from the coil and I run 12 volts to the coil? either through a ballast or not. Okay, so that's one of my questions. Now, since uh, I'm only going to run the intake side, but this cap has two coils, one for an intake side and one for exhaust side plugs, and of course eight uh, spark plug wires, four of which are for the uh, intake side, intake plugs, and four for the exhaust plugs. So my plan is to just use the intake coil and the intake, the four intake uh, spark plugs. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing this, and part of the reason is right now with a stock setup it probably doesn't matter, but with high energy ignitions, sometimes you can get what they call a um, spark cross from one to the next inside the cat from the rotor. So depending on phasing and how precise this uh, mo electronic module is, the spark could be sparking to this post and then as it's turning, if it's still sparking, possibly jump over to this one, especially with high-powered ignitions. Now, with the stock, I don't stock ignition. I don't expect that to happen. However, if I ever update this to like a uh, MSD or something with a lot of spark, that could come in handy having this wider gap between the rotor phasing. So I would just uh, probably. Um, in the, in the cap here, I don't know if you can see it, there's the main intake spark from the coil, and that's for the exhaust coil. I'll probably just pull that out, and then I would probably go in with a little Dremel cutoff wheel and cut all the exhaust um, posts off, and just keep the intake posts in there. That's kind of my idea. So again, guys, give me some ideas on whether you think this ignition module will work just running the intake side, intake plugs side of it, and whether this uh, B terminal here in the middle is goes 12 volt battery, or does that come from the, uh, I guess, the negative side of the coil? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.